Hey everybody, welcome back to New Video's channel and today we look into a problem that is as old as view itself. Multiple components in one file? Is it possible? We'll see it now. Let's go. If you worked in a bigger view application, then you probably encountered a problem. Sometimes you simply have to extract a component, even though it kinda is only used in one single place. For example, in the QuickPick Nuxt application that I recently migrated over from React and Next.js to Nuxt. In the application itself, by the way, check out the video if you haven't, um, we have a page called svg2png, for example, or also the square image page. And down here, components are used like the square tool or the svg tool component. And of course, they're only used there, but still, you have to go to the components folder and the square tool.view folder to actually find it, right? And to have a look at it which means you might navigate through a component to component to component, though it's still pretty much related to only that page. And now I might wonder, is this an actual problem? Like you can just click there and it's fine. And I mean, if you just have a few files, I think that's kind of fine, sure. But as soon as your application grows and grows, you might have a long list of components and then you start with very long names, for example, which, well, it becomes tedious and might not be the easiest experience. So if you even say you have a list, like a v4, right? And you would say, oh, I want to extract the thing that's rendered as a list. You commonly also create a new component, extract it out, and uh, find a good name, like, I don't know, post list snippets dot view. Well, it would be convenient to just keep it in the component where it is looping over and define it there. But in the normal view with our single file components, you can't because, it's, well, it's called a single file components, right? So one component, one file. But there's a solution, and it has been around for a while, that uh, I want to show you today where it can work and you can have multiple components in a single file. And that solution is ViewWine, another style to write view components. Some of you might have followed along my episode on WebRush, episode 250 actually, and sorry for the flash, where I even talked about this, which was in August 2023. So maybe some of you have tried it out already. Nevertheless, um, ViewWine is Basically a very simple way to say, hey, let's get the power of single file components and move them over to TypeScript. So instead of going through the docs, because I mean, honestly, you can read them yourself, the link is in the description as usual. Let's just spin up a demo application and show you what it actually means. Our demo app is as minimal as usual. We only have compatibility data set, dev tools enabled, the compatibility version for future flag as usual. If you've seen any other videos on this channel, you know what it's about and some styling. So we have a dark background. We also disable SSR because right now at the time of recording, there's a tiny issue with SSR in ViewWine, but it is already capable of doing SSR. So it's just a matter of time until it's fixed. And probably when you're watching it, that's already done. Also, we've added the module, right? The ViewWine Nuxt module, so we're good to go. And if you're wondering, wait, why do we test this with Nuxt.js? Well, just to show that it works. You can, of course, use it in plain view. That's not a problem at all. So let's get going. Oh, and of course we have our app view, which is just some text right now, right? So if we look at it in the browser, that's that. Also, while you're around, don't forget that. 10 million subscribers. In but now it's really time to use view wine. And to do this, we create a new file and we can just do it in the components folder as we are used to if you use Nuxt.js or so Vue.js, right? And now we can call test. And here the suffix and extension is important. We call test.vine.ts. The name itself, well, you can do it as you want, but as Nux auto component import will work, we can leave it like that too. And here we go. Yeah, no SFC file, add .ts file, because once again, we want to have multiple components in one file and it doesn't work with single file components. So let's see how it works. Now we can start straight away writing our wine component. We can just say export default function test with a capital T, but it doesn't matter too much, up to you. And in here, we can just straight away return something. And if we use vine, which is the view wine tag template function, then we can put some sub stuff here like h1, hey folks. And if we save this, well, that will be shown. You might wonder, okay, this looks very nice, perfect, it's great. View wine actually has an extension that you can install. So Shanking Chuan has an amazing job there with the extension and also the whole view wine concept. So definitely give that a look if you use VS Code. So everything is nicely highlighted, formatted, and of course, it works well with Vue 3 and TypeScript as mentioned before. Okay, now we want to use that component or app that view, so let's just do that. And instead of this here, we can just say test vine. 
And yes, this part is Nuxt auto import, right? Because it's test.vine.ts, it's easy to import and to use. And let's see what happens when you take a look at the browser. And the answer is obviously our component is rendered and shown. And the best part is it is fully recognizable in the DevTools as well. So let me zoom out here a little bit. And if we take a look at the components, yeah, that's here. It's available, it's rendered. And also the view DevTools, this is all shown. Because in the background, all these templates exported by the viewwine functions, they are running through the compiler, through the template compilers. So we actually write view templates in these tag template literals and functions. Nice, right? So we have a template and all beforehand we can, well, customize our logic. So why not trying that out? So one thing we'd easily do is just build a little counter. So we say const count is ref zero, like we know from view, we can also import all these things, of course, if we need to, but I think like that is totally fine. And then we can just say like, okay, you know what? We have a button here and we say uh, counts or counter and then render that. And then we might start with like, oh wait, that's nice. The whole like mustache syntax for interpolation still works. Yeah, it does. Of course we want to use count here and it's also properly inferred. So even with that level step in between, well, things just work out of the box without a problem. And if we have a look at the browser, then we have our counter here. Of course, we still need some methods to, to use it. So let's continue with that. Because obviously, well, we probably need two buttons and should move this into an H2. And then just say we have a button for increment and a button for decrement, right? And then we just say, okay, you know what? Add click, they do things. So we can just say, okay, they do either this or that, either increment or decrement. And then we can create our functions. So we say we have a function increment just saying, okay, easy counted value plus plus. And for decrement, it is literally the same. We all know this from a very basic Vue.js example, and we see it is really not that different compared to Vue.js, except where we write our code. If we now look into the browser, then we can just use that and it will use Vue's reactivity system. Everything is working out of the box as it should. And well, there are no issues around that. But I might wonder, wait, what is about things like props, right? Or slots or all these things or events that components usually are, well, consist of, right? Luckily, we want a solution for that as well. And it works pretty similar to SFCs. We use exactly compiler macros. So um, let's go ahead. You can implement props in various ways. So if you have a lot of props, then you can just decide to say, okay, I want to put the props up here and then just give a type here. So we say, I don't know, we have some content, which is a string. We have some optional uh, prop, which is a number and so on, so on. That's not a problem. But you can also do something different because you can also use a macro per prop. So you could even say const content to stay with this example, vine prop, right? Pass in a string as generic. And that's that. The prop is named based on the variable name, so content and there we go. If you want to make it optional, you can of course say, okay, to put optional, you can call it also as with defaults if you want to. So you can say, hey, sure, find prop dot with default and the default should be default content. That's also not an issue at all. And you can even provide a validator function if you want to. So once again, you have the full power of Vue.js right at your fingertips. And if you just have a few props, that's super useful. So um, let's better pass some content in there, right? To pass in the props properly, let's go with an enforce prop and just write string here and we're fine. Remove the default. Then we can say, okay, this is all recognized. Let's go to our app.view. And uh, here we already have, well, an arrow. So we can put in content here and say, hey, this is uh, real content. And if we now check out the browser, obviously, then we will see nothing changed because we didn't render the content anywhere. Let's quickly do this, right? So just under the buttons, we just render the content that we've defined before. And if we now go back, then we'll see the content exists. This is real content. Here we go. And of course, now you are aware of how to set props with emits. It works very similar to define emits, right? We just use vine emits. And in the same manner, things will work out. TS will recognize and so on and so on. But now to the real benefit multiple components in a single file. Let's add another component, render it, and uh, then think about some drawbacks and see what you think about. To add another component in the same file, we just write another function. So let's say test child, 
Yeah, that sounds good. And here we can just return, of course, another vine template if we want to. And we say vine h1 or let's do an h2 here. I am a child. And uh, of course, this is not directed to me, but the component, obviously. So eventually we can just uh, render that and say, okay, this is the test child. So the only thing to do is refer to the test child. And we have that completion here right away in our vine template and we're good. In this case, of course, this is in the same file, so we don't have to do any imports, references, and we know what it's related to. We can take a look at that and we're fine. If you want to use other components, that's easily possible too, either for auto importing or for using them by direct imports. And if we once again switch to browser, we see that I am a child is there and we're good. So eventually you are able to group components in that one single file while not missing out on anything from the view template. Great, right? Though some of you, especially those with other framework experiences like React or Solid or anything JSX based might wonder, yeah, why not using JSX? And the reason is simple. Mine, you can use JSX already today with Vue, so you could do that. But the problem is, well, first of all, JSX is very, very flexible. It doesn't sound a problem, right? But it is a problem because Vue's compiler can't do a lot of optimizations then. That's also why uh, Shenkinjran from the Vue Wine team, who was also the creator then, decided to go with a template-based approach. So first of all, you can keep the original character of Vue.js, but also make sure to get all these sweet optimizations. So performance-wise, it won't get worse just by using another method. Talking about another method, yes, a lot of people said, ah, oh, this is the one thing we want to do in Vue.js, multiple components in one file. But Another thing that people are really annoyed about is how in how many ways you can write components in Vue.js, right? You have script setup with just the composition API, which is the way to go. Then you have the composition API without script setup, which you should never, never use, right? I mean, I hope you don't. Otherwise, migrate, please, soon, yeah? We have the options API, which still support it, but, um, well, it's not the preferred way, so to say. But if people prefer that, that's, of course, up to you. You can not use single file components at all or in the script, then you can use JSX if uh, some of you might just heard about and others might have tried already. Render functions uh, if someone really wants to go into that level. And of course now also Vwine, which is by no means like an official standard away at the current time, right? This is just another option, another library like view macros as well. So of course this is another downside and could lead to more fragmentization. On the other hand, it is not that different compared to a single file component because you keep most of the part itself. And we just make the component very, well, self-contained, right? But in multiple ways in a single file. And apparently people from the React universe are very happy about that, even though well, it's just a little bit of a different syntax. In my opinion, I think it solves the problem if you really have it pretty well. If I would use that more and more, Let's see, I might give it a, a try and uh, use it in a proper application. Nevertheless, what you should do is check out all the links in the description to the code, of course, to the project itself, and uh, let me know what you think about it. Would you give it a try? Does it look weird compared to single file components? And have you tried it out? What's your experience? All that I'd be really curious to know. So yeah, write it down here. I'll read for all of them and answer. And uh, I hope you have a great day. Uh, check out the latest videos, of course, beforehand. Check out the latest Deja Vu episode where I talk about error handling in Vue.js. Michael and I uh, take a look from fine-grained, coarse, and component-level-based error handling. So give it a listen, and um, hopefully see you soon in the next video. Have a great day, and uh, happy hacking.